Hey guys, Laird here. In this video, we will continue our AI journey for the lightsaber combat tutorial. So I'm just going to quickly remind you that in the last tutorial, we've got our AI guy, AI opponent walking around with his leg animations properly appearing on the screen. So the way how our AI works, if we go ahead and find uh, C AI controller, uh, the way how our, our AI works is that in the begin play we just have this looping AI move 2, which is a latent event or latent action, takes some time, whether it succeeds or fails, we wait and then we make the next one. So this is not how you would approach AI programming, and Unreal has an environment for it called behavior trees, or you could call it a tool. So let's make the same code, the same exact code in behavior tree. And for this, usually the way how I work with AI is I create a folder AI in my content folder. And here we will start with AI, uh, sorry, with the behavior tree. So let's call it LC LCC BT. So LCC is the way how is the name of the project. For me and BT is behavior tree. Okay, so here we have our behavior tree opened. We will need something for behavior tree which will function as a data storage or kind of runtime data storage. So the way how AI um, code works in the behavior tree, which we will discuss in more detail later, is that it uses uh, behavior tree nodes such as decorators. Um, decorator services and tasks to perform various actions and the way how these decorators services and tasks uh, talk to each other because you know it's, it's not really useful for them to write straight to, to write variables straight to the um, for example our AI controller or write the pawn so if, if you made it this way you would have to change the pawn every time you change the AI control or sort of change the behavior tree or every time you want to add some new, um, for example, target destination storage, target destination variable, you will have to go to pawn. And uh, it's not good for uh, separation of concerns. We want to have our AI relevant data in the behavior tree. And the behavior tree has specific storage for it. It's called blackboards. So let's go ahead here in the AI folder, create artificial intelligence blackboard. And I just call it LCCBB, which is short for Blackboard. Okay, so one thing um, you have to keep in mind is that right now I'm not using my Blackboard in my behavior tree. Here on the right, I have behavioral, uh, sorry, behavior tree Blackboard assets. It's set to none. Oh yeah, by the way, my interface for the uh, behavior tree is a little bit different than the default one. By the way, I need to move my cam a little bit, so let me just do that right now. Let me move it somewhere here. Okay, so you can see that I have the blackboard and behavior tree switch right here. You would have it somewhere on top. I'm j I just switched it because it's uh, nicer for my real estate or des desktop real estate. Okay, so blackboard asset, I'll se select LCCBB. And I'll just save this guy. LCCBB, as you can see, is empty. So let's create a new um, member here, new variable, and it will be a vector, move destination. And this is a typical way to work with the simplest behavior trees, because what we want to do, let's see, what we want to do is we want to uh, kind of find the points where we're going to move, and then we're going to move it. And this is the same as here in LCCA controller, what we were doing, we were getting a random point and giving it straight to this node, this task. In behavior trees, you will ha you, you also have move two. Right now, if I take out of the root, this is where the execution starts. I'll take out the arrow here and I say, well, I'll, I'll do selector. I'll explain what those mean in a minute. I do selector and I do move two. You can see that move two. And this is the typical way for uh, behavior tree tasks. You can see that move2 takes as an input blackboard key. Now, what does it mean? Well, move2 needs to kind of know, you know, what's, what is the destination. And the blackboard key, 
is set by default to move destination because that's that's the only blackboard key we have in our blackboard if you remember and so here you could put uh, vector or you, you could actually put actor and this move to is smart enough the task is written in a way that if it's an actor it will actually move to the deck to, a, to an actor sorry so for example if we uh, stored um, targets of this ai controller or in this of this ai logic let's say you know find enemy target will be in our behavior tree we could just go ahead and say move to our target so it it produces kind of like polymorphism and like more flexibility when working with move to and some other tasks in the behavior tree okay so what are these selector and there is also sequence i'll explain this too there's also simple parallel i'll touch that upon maybe later but basic building blocks are this sequence and selector so what are those and how does the behavior tree works work okay so let's go to our photoshop here so let's talk about sequence first so i'm just gonna call this guy forgive me for my table writing <laughs> in the photoshop so this is sequence now the way sequence works is that you can act and this is like upper note and by the way the first thing probably i have to mention is that you take the you take the root node and you uh, put selector or sequence below it and you cannot put tasks just just uh, directly uh, below the root node you need to put sequence or selector because the logic has to understand how does it make any how does it make its choices so sequence and selector are two distinct way to distinct ways to um, perform tasks and operate on the results of task performances so sequence let me let me raise this table s and make a new one and just make this all nice and tidy sequence when you put several tasks here two three when you perform several tasks here it will go through each of those tasks and the tasks in behavior tree can either succeed or fail so when all of these tasks succeed it just returns to the root node and then you know the next tick of behavior tree we will go again and do whatever is, is necessary and keep in mind that tasks in uh, behavior tree are latent so it means that if the behavior tree goes here in the first one right this can take some time right so i could just maybe try drawing this weird or or maybe not maybe it will not <laughs> look like a clock at all right so we have one big thing and one small thing right all right so we have a task which takes time here it will just keep performing and behavior tree will not exit this task so we'll, it will be stuck right here until this guy finishes or fails now when sequence has its one of the one of the tasks in its um, connections finished successfully it will go to the next one so the flow will be like this from left to right okay now what happens if any of those tasks fail well if any of those task, tasks fail the next tasks in the line of sequence will not be performed it, the sequence will exit and go upward so to the root node presumably or if you have some other sequence or selector here because you can chain them of course and then of course if you enter it again it will start from the beginning until one of those fail or until all of them succeed and sequence will fail if any of those fail and it will succeed only if all of them succeed of course in order so it goes from left to right and all of them have to succeed and any of those tasks have to succeed in sequence in order for the next ones to be performed so this is a sequence and then we have selector you could use selector for branching logic and the way how selector works is that uh, as soon as any of the child tasks so let's say we have task one have tasks two task three here as soon as any of these guys succeed any one of those succeeds this guy goes back and say you know I'm, I'm successful now if this guy if the first one fails right we go to the next one now the next one if the next one succeeds we succeed the sequence uh, sorry the selector immediately right so this goes up 
Now if this guy also fails, then we try the other one. And the way how you probably, you, you would usually use it is with decorators. Now decorators basically are, um, they're they are decorating uh, the conditions for which are required for the task to be performed. So if this is a task, let's say this is a task one, I can have several conditions here, which will be decorators. Oops, this is terrible. I'm sorry for my table writing because I'm not using um, I'm not using the tablet for it, so I have to use, use my mouse right now. <laughs> so these are decorators here, and before the task is even attempted, uh, the logic, the Unreal behavior tree logic, will go through each of those decorators, and all of them have to return true. If any of those return false, this returns false immediately without even attempting to do the task. And the selector, in, the, in our case, the selector will go to the next one. If the creator was on top of the sequence subtask, then the sequence will, would fail immediately, so if you remember. So these are the core building blocks of uh, behavior trees in Unreal. And right now, let's go back here in our editor. And let's make some tasks. So we already have move to one, we need one more thing which will be get our random points. So if you remember here, we were doing this. We were taking the pawn, getting AI allocation of it, and getting a random point somewhere. Let's do the same with behavior tree task. And we could do this as a service, but I want to do sequentially so that we find the points, and if we found the point, we move there, and then maybe, <coughs> sorry, maybe we wait. So right here, I'll make a folder for myself called tasks just for better management of, our, of my files. And to make a task, you need to uh, create a child blueprint of class BT task blueprint base. And let's say, um, get reachable points. And I do underscore BT task. Okay, so node name here, I open the editor and now I have node name in my uh, what is it? initial values of the class. This is the tab, right? Node name will be the name which you will see when you oops, sorry, <laughs> when you place this task here. So this task has a node name of two. If I just keep it as nothing and let me compile this, it doesn't do anything for now. I can already place this guy here. I can play, I can place it and call it get ritual point bt task. So you can see the full name is just written there. I don't like that, so I go get reachable point. Okay, so first of all, we need to get a blackboard input value, which will which which we will then write to. And so this will be target point. And the type of it, if I click here, I can change the type of variable, will be blackboard key selector. So we basically ask, okay, to which key do we need to write our result in, a, in this particular case? Because in this case, this task does give a result. And let's then go here to the functions and let's overwrite receive execute AI. So this is what gets called when this task gets is executed by behavior tree. We go here. And you can see we get on a controller and pawn as inputs. So it's really easy for, for us now to go ahead and say get actor location. Oops. And then say reachable, get random reachable point and radius. And say the radius could be an input value as well. So I could say I could carry it from the radius tab, promote a variable, and call it radius. And make it public. Just click this I. And when I click this I, you will see what happens. When I go here to my behavior tree, and then I say get reachable points, you can see that on the right now I can edit this radius. So I can customize my behavior tree tasks in the behavior tree itself. So let me put default radius of 10 meters, right? And so we do this get reachable point radius, and then we branch on the success of the result. Now, if it wasn't successful, we, we need to call finish execute to let the blueprints know that our tasks, task is executed because sometimes tasks can take time. 
and this this is this is our opportunity to do stuff which takes a lot of time right okay so finish execute without a success so success is false we failed and remember if it was a sequence it would mean that the sequence gets restarted gets restarted so finish execute now this is a false if true we need to to write it to target point how do we do that let's carry target point here and then set blackboard value as vector remember blackboard values are they're kind they're not dynamically typed but um, at any point of time when you get blackboard key selector type of data you don't really know what kind of data is it so you have to be careful with not writing the wrong, wrong stuff to it or not giving the wrong keys with the wrong types so if this was a success we give this location as a value so we store it in target point now target point will have our vector with location and after that we say well that's it right we succeeded so remember, uh, this task is really trivial. It doesn't take any time. It just does one simple operation with navigation system and then immediately finishes. So it will take like one tick. But you could wait here. You could use tick event here and you can tick. And in a tick event, you could do finish eventually when you you know decided that everything is appropriate. And that, that's how move to basically works. It's just written in C++. Until we finished our movement, we don't do anything. We don't finish the task. That's why task will take time. So now we have our get reachable point to move destination and then we move to move destination and then let's wait. So we say wait, wait is the same as delay and here you can see we have the opportunity to randomize the wait time. So let's put there like one second plus minus 250 milliseconds, right? Okay, now the problem with this, this is a selector. So as soon as get reachable point succeeds, we will, we will start again, right? We want to put them in sequence. Just like that. Now, after we've done that, um, we can go to back to our LCC AI controller. And let's try replacing all this logic with behavior tree. So we have in controller run behavior tree node. And we can just give it BTAT, BT asset, right? And we'll, which will be LCCBT, LCC behavior tree. So we've done all of that. Um, let's see what happens in the game. Well, it actually works. So it does the same thing as, as we had before, but now we are using behavior tree. And last thing I'll show you today. Uh, will be if you go to your LCCBT right now um, you can just like in blueprint select debuggable debuggable actor in the world in our case it's controller because behavior tree is on top of a controller so you can see here I have LCCA controller and I can literally debug what happens there so you can see that in sequence we get visual point it, it Executes so fast that we don't even catch it. Then it does move to move to takes time because he moves there And then when move to finishes we have wait operation and You can also see that move destination, which is our key from B from the blackboard gets changed when we do get reachable point so here we basically have an opportunity to to um, Observe all the logic that we put onto behavior tree and even break on some of it. So at breakpoints and boom when we put there a break you can see that behavior tree actually shows us what actually happened just before we hit it in our case it was sequence so the last thing that happened was get reachable point returned true or success so as you see this green thing okay so we moved our system to behavior trees and now we have all the opportunities to start building some fighting logic and uh, we will cover that, we will go more into behavior trees uh, in the next tutorial, or in the next tutorials rather, because I think I want to make some tweaks to the movement system. We will see how it goes. Thank you for watching, I would appreciate your feedback, your questions, subscribe, like, and see you in the next tutorial.